Hi, this is Dr. Krupka. Today we're going to talk about functional medicine compared to conventional medicine and explain how I practice. Now, conventional healthcare, what we're used to in this country or any country that's that's predominantly pharmaceutically based in their healthcare, it involves a system of diagnosis followed by an algorithmic approach to treatment. That means basically, uh, once we name it, we open up a book, we run through an algorithm, it tells us what to do, and certainly if we named it properly, everybody will end up feeling fine, right? So an algorithm by definition, a finite set of well-defined instructions for accomplishing some task, which given an initial state, will result in a corresponding predictable or recognizable end state. That means if we start in the same place and when we do the same thing, we should have the same outcome no matter how many patients we do this on. Unfortunately, it doesn't always work that way, but that's the idea. Now, here's an example of an algorithm. Total cholesterol greater than 200, you simply ask do they have active liver disease or not. If they do, you give one medication, you get a cholesterol lower than 200. If they don't, you give a statin drug, you get a cholesterol level lower than 200. It seems very simple, right? But unfortunately, there are multiple other variables that aren't accounted for in here. Um, we'll talk about what some of those variables are in just a second, but I just want you to have an idea of what I mean when I say an algorithm. It's kind of a simple yes-no flowchart that takes you through treating somebody's issues. Now in functional medicine, we are much more concerned with proper functioning of the body's systems, relying on the body's homeostatic mechanisms to restore health. Okay, now, it, functional medicine practitioners embrace the philosophy that given the opportunity, your body will return to a normal healthy state. That means that our treatment approaches focus largely on removing obstacles that impede your health. Generally, if you want to really look at it simplistically, most of what we do revolves around either giving you more of something that you need or giving you less of something that you don't. There's either too much of something you don't need or too little of something you do. Right? It's not rocket science, but figuring out what it is that you need and don't need, that's the trick with functional medicine. Now, by definition, functional medicine is a science-based healthcare approach that assesses and treats underlying causes of illness, notice it doesn't treat diseases, through individually tailored therapies to restore health and improve function. Fix the underlying problem, the disease is no longer a big concern. Now, here are the seven principles of functional medicine. It is science-based medicine that connects the emerging research base to clinical practice. Now, there's generally about a 10 or 15 year rule in medicine. It used to be a 50 year rule, but the internet's helped somewhat with that. Whereas, if, if we find something out now, if we discover something now that makes a difference, it can take 10 to 15 years to show up in clinical practice where doctors are actually treating patients that way. In functional medicine, we really work hard to stay on kind of the cutting edge of research that's out there and responsibly use that research and apply it to our patients that we see in our office. Now that research can be you know, relating to physiology, mechanisms, interactions um, with medications and nutrients, case studies of how certain patients have done with certain treatments, even pharmaceutical research, which is the kind of holy grail placebo-controlled double-blind studies. All of that we work to incorporate as early as possible in the process, but do it responsibly. Now, we also have biochemical individual individuality. This is arguably one of the most fundamental principles of functional medicine. It is based on genetic and, and environmental uniqueness. That means that your genes and your environment determine your health. Your genes are not your destiny. Right? Gene expression is variable and able to be manipulated. Our genes determine our responses to specific environmental factors. So what are environmental factors? Well, our environment is made up, both internal and external environment, made up of chemical, spiritual, and structural elements. Okay, you, Those combine to influence our genetic expression. If you manipulate the environment, if you change the environment, you can change your genetic expression. Okay, that's a very powerful statement, and it's well documented. You change your environment, you change your genetic expression. You change your lifestyle, you change your life. Now, how important is this? We've been able to identify modifiable behavioral factors, including specific aspects of diet, weight, inactivity, and smoking that account for over 70% of stroke and colon cancer, over 80% of coronary heart disease, and over 90% of adult onset diabetes. That means that if you change your lifestyle, if we all changed our lifestyles collectively, we could get rid of 70%, 80%, and 90% respectively of these diseases. These are not rare diseases. 
right? These are very important diseases in our society. They affect hundreds of thousands of people every year and cost us literally billions of dollars to treat. And it's all due to modifiable behavioral factors. Change your lifestyle, you change your life. The next principle of functional medicine, patient-centered care. Like I said before, I treat patients. I don't treat diseases. If I fix the patient, if I normalize their physiology, the diseases are gone. They're manifestations of abnormal physiology. Normalize the physiology, you get rid of the symptoms. Now, dynamic balance of internal and external factors. We kind of talked about that with biochemical individuality. If you change the environment, you can change the expression of the genes, right? So that internal and external environment, if you manipulate that and you change that and you normalize it or make it advantageous to the patient, you change the genetic expression, you change their physiology, you change their disease process. Web-like interconnections of physiological processes. Well, this simply says that what my liver does affects my digestion. What my digestion does affects my brain. What my brain does affects my heart. What's going on in me structurally affects my nerves. And, and that is, is evidenced very clearly, although somewhat confusingly, by this diagram that's called the web, or some people call it the functional medicine matrix. That's looking at the interactions between all the different systems and, and functions and organs in the body. You cannot see, in my estimation, a, a gastrointestinal specialist who, who doesn't take into account that you know, the liver changes digestion, and digestion changes what the immune system does, and the immune system changes your inflammatory balance, and your inflammatory balance affects the vascular system, right? It does not, none of your organ systems work in a vacuum. They all interconnect and interact with each other. Promotion of organ reserve. How many times have I had a patient tell me, I don't want to live to be 95. Oh my God, I hope I, don't, I hope I don't make it that long. Well, if you assume that living to 95 means your last 10 years are in and out of the hospital having random body parts removed because they don't function anymore, I can understand that. But if you can get to a point where you understand that if your organs last as long as you do, if your organs don't give out on you one by one, year by year, but if they all give out at the same time five minutes before you go, Living to 95 is a beautiful thing. That's organ reserve, that's health span, not just lifespan. And then you have to understand, we look at health as a positive vitality. It's an entity of it into of itself. It is not simply the absence of disease or the absence of symptoms. Health is optimal function, optimal wellness. That's health. It is not just the absence of disease. Here's an example, a, a little scale that you can look at. On the right side, you have diagnosable illness and disease. In the middle, you have these symptoms where, hey, I'm not able to be diagnosed with anything specific, but man, I just don't feel right. This can't be right. Maybe I'm just getting old, right? But on the left-hand side of the scale here, you see wellness. Not only are you not diagnosable with a particular disease, but you don't have symptoms. You actually function well. Your body runs like a well-oiled machine. A machine. That's what you need to strive for. Now, how do we go about this? Well, in functional medicine, we look at the hormonal and neurotransmitter imbalances, antioxidant imbalances. Do your mitochondria function well? Can you create energy? Can you detoxify the trash and the exhaust that floats around your body? Can you package it? That's biotransformation. And can you get rid of it? That's excretory imbalance. Do we digest our food appropriately? Do you absorb nutrients the way you should? Do you have the right gut ecology? Do you have the right bacteria living in the intestinal tract? Um, is your immune system working appropriately? Is it creating too much inflammation for your body to handle? Is that leading to your symptoms? And do you have nutritional deficiencies or imbalances that aren't allowing your body to do all the rest of these things appropriately? Tools of the trade, what do we do to fix these? We use lifestyle modification. That's a huge part of what we do. We use nutritional interventions. We use food choices. We use supplements, mostly whole food supplements, but from time to time we have to use a synthetic supplement. Uh, we use herbal therapies. We use emotional and spiritual awareness, stress reduction therapies, and we do structural work to make sure that the structural problems in your body are not impeding the information that needs to get to the organs to tell them what to do. So how do you contact us if this seems like the approach you like? There's the information on the screen for you. You can call us at the office. You can reach us through the website. Um, if you go to our website at drkrupka.com, you can click on links to the blog and see many, many more presentations like this. So thank you for joining me. Thanks for your attention, and we'll see you on the next video.